Hi, my name is Claudia Garcia Rojas and I am at the New Yorker Hotel for the Latin Alternative Music Conference with Monica Lionheart. How are you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. Thanks well, for having me. Yeah, no problem. Um, so I really want to talk to you about your background in music because I was reading that you um, are very familiar with all these different instruments like the guitar and the piano and the flute. Um, so tell me a little bit about, you know, about that background. Uh, well, I grew up in a really, really musical family. Um, okay. My grandfather would wake me up with the accordion, and my mother plays acoustic guitar. I learned, from, I learned to play from her. Um, and all my cousins play instruments. They made makeshift drums, and I mean, we uh, would communicate more so with music than we would with anything else. Okay. Um, so, I also went to Berklee College of Music, okay. and then I, uh, I graduated with a degree in music education, and then I okay. got my master's at NYU in music technology. Nice. So I, I really enjoy the production side of music and the composition aspect, okay. and I also enjoy teaching. Um, nice. But uh, I think in this album, Indian Summer, my focus was in songwriting. Okay. And be able, being able to communicate a story from beginning to end that made sense, and I really, uh, find that what music translates time is music that's really mm -hmm. uh, thought about in terms of good solid songwriting lyrically yeah. melodically yeah yeah that's it's really interesting that you mentioned sort of enjoying the the aspect of writing in this album mm -hmm. I wanted to ask if you can maybe tease out a little bit some of the differences between uh, lyrical writing and music writing and how you sort of merge those or how it is that you negotiate both of those differences I think uh, a lot of times the songs might start with um, a poem, you okay. know, uh, or sometimes they start with a melody. So that's when you kind of, when it starts with a melody, you kind of are at this at the mercy of the sound. And what I do on my journal is I, I draw these little lines of, um, or I could write out the, the actual lead sheet, like the melody on a line and, and paper. But okay. sometimes I write out these little lines that have how many syllables I want to fill and what are the ending words. And yeah. that's a little bit more, it's harder to get a really good story that way because you're at the mercy of, this, of the sound instead okay. of, of the story. Uh, the best stories, I think, are when you have an entire song, you know, j just comes. Um, and the and the melody of the poem or the lyrics mm -hmm. kind of dictate the song instead, because I mean both can work obviously, but I, right. I just have found that that's the strongest way. And sometimes it's just you know the melody is so powerful that you want to write the song to that melody. And okay. sometimes you know you have to be at the mercy of of the muses. They're right. in charge. <laughs> uh, well, it's amazing that you can sort of combine both. I think that that's very powerful. Oh, thank um, you. I want to ask you, since you say that sometimes stories inspire different sort of uh, lyrics, so are there any current uh, stories happening in the world that inspire you or that sort of move you to want to write? That's a really good question. I think that um, there's a lot of stories, definitely. Um, I, I, I mean, politically, I don't want to get too involved, but okay, we can understand <laughs> but that. I, but I find that I find that um, that definitely reflecting on 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 what's happening around us is a is a very powerful thing. And um, I'm actually you know a vegan, okay. And I think that it's really for me. I find it really empowering to to kind of find a way to express the the value of other life, you know. Um, right. And so I include I include a lot of nature in, in you know lyrics with okay. nature. It's, it's hard to do. I mean, I think Gautier has a song. Um, I forgot the title of it, but it's really all about like the end of the world and okay. and um, and about how we've abused our planet and mm -hmm. and I think that it, those things are really important to reflect on. It's hard sometimes to to do it in a song that sounds sincere and not too preachy and. Yeah. Um, so far, I mean, it's something that I have in my in mind, but I haven't really executed it in this right. album, but maybe in the future. Okay, and um, since you mentioned that you're a vegan, uh, do you cook a lot of vegan food, like raw cheesecakes or anything? Um, I, I like to eat mostly salads, and um, okay. I in the morning I wake up and have a banana shake, soy shake. Uh, okay. I mean, I like to, I, I prefer um, to eat things that are really simple, that I know, I know what all the ingredients are. I'm okay. not that, I mean, I've, I've tried uh, vegan raw cheesecake, 
um, before. There's this great place in Williamsburg, actually, if you're if you're ever around. Yeah, <laughs> I'd like to <laughs> hear. Called Champs. That's really great. They make amazing pastries and that are all raw. Okay, I'm, I was asking because um, I actually. Uh, cook a lot of raw vegan you food, do. so yes. Oh, well. So I like Should to let hear me what know. other people do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, I'm not that great of a chef, though. Um, I do think that composition is like yeah. definitely involved. In yeah, the taste there's buds. a lot of ingredients. It's amazing. Um, so I'd like to hear a little bit about uh, your perspective um, on sort of developing artistic skills and just really emerging in New York City as an artist. I mean, clearly you have this background where it's very solid in comparison to other artists who maybe haven't had like the formal background. Right. Um, but uh, I know that you have that formal background, but there's also a lot of competition in New York. So how do you negotiate that and, and emerge? I try not to think about it as competition as, I mean, I just, I do what I, I do. And I'm yeah. happy to, you know, to do it. I, I write songs, I organize the band. Yeah. I record it. I, you know, give it to the label. Okay. I collaborate with other artists. I mean, I don't. I just try to have like the uh, little. I mean, I try to see what's around me and yeah. in, and let it inspire me. But um, I'm really just focused on my own, being my optimum self, and yeah. that has nothing to do with um, anybody else's path in life or where they're at or you know. Yeah. Nice. I think that that's a really good perspective to have, especially. Um, and there are so many different artists doing like, such great things, so yeah. it's wonderful. Um, so, can you tell me a little bit about your process, like your music process, like how how do you get inspired, and how do you sort of end up, uh, like how did like Indian Summer happen, for example? Uh, Indian Summer, I was in the island of Santorini in oh, Greece. Wow. Okay. I subletted my apartment in New York, which it was actually say I saved money going to Greece and subletting my apartment in New York. Because um, it's much cheaper, but it's beautiful, and it was in complete isolation. And I find that um, artists need to be sometimes like the static of the city and the energy of, of all all everyone's thoughts, and it's just sometimes it can be fueling, and other times it can be draining. So right. um, I found that in in remote isolation, I was able to capture something that was extremely sincere. I wasn't even intended, I didn't intend to put the album out. Okay. You know, I collaborate with Zygmat, Pacha Massive, and you right. know, I, my stuff I thought was just too personal and okay. and too intimate. And I showed it with some friends and they were like, what are you talking, you, like, you have to, other people will connect with your story and it's important for you to get your voice as, mm -hmm. as it is in the most sincere way out there, you know. And so yeah, I, I uh, ended up sharing it with Tomas and, and signing with Nacional. And so the process is really, for me, it's a, a process that requires isolation in order for me to really be able to create something that, um, that doesn't have too many other influences happening and, and too much static. <laughs> you yeah. know what I mean? That's great. Well, thank you for passing it on to okay. Tomas because it's a phenomenal, it's a really, it's a phenomenal album. Oh, um, thank you. And your voice is just it's beautiful, so thanks a lot. Um, I appreciate I'm it. I'm glad that we can get that. And I just I want to ask you two quick questions before we wrap up. Okay. Um, the first one is, as a female artist, um, I just want to hear maybe who some of your influences are, some of your sheroes that you've looked up to, because I think it's important to hear that from. Sure. Um, I don't know if you know this Mexican artist, Lasa de Sela. Yes, I do. She's amazing, beautiful writer. Yes. I mean, she passed. I think two years ago of breast cancer. Right. Um, but she was a, I mean, she definitely ornated, decorated my life with beautiful music. Um, Nina Simone. I mean, I, I'm really sort of a <laughs> back in the day type of listener. Okay. Um, so I, I also listen to a lot of film music and I like to compose film music and okay. commercial music. Um, so, you know, the, those two are really high up there. Okay, wonderful. Um, and can you tell us a little bit about your background? Because I know you also speak Spanish. And so I do. Um, my mother's from Spain, from Valencia. Okay. My father's Puerto Rican. Um, I was born in Puerto Rico, and I okay. grew up in San Antonio, Texas. Wow. Which is, I grew up around Mexicans, so my, my accent is very, in Spanish is very like, what? You know, because my mother's Spanish, my father's Puerto Rican. I grew up in half of, you know, until I was about 14 in Puerto Rico and then the rest in Texas, middle school in Texas, high school in Texas. So it's kind of this, you know, 
patchwork of uh, <laughs> where are you from, you know, yeah. I always kind of just not sure what to answer. Yeah, nice. Um, well, thank you for taking the time to speak with Los Amos. And yeah. where can people find out more about your work? They can go directly to the website, um, monicalionheart.com, okay. or on Facebook. It's all one word, facebook.com forward slash monicalionheart. Okay. Twitter.com forward slash monicalionheart. Okay. Um, so all those places, you know, you can okay. connect. Wonderful. Well, thank yeah. you so much. It's a pleasure. Thank you.